Hello and welcome to the Friday Vibe with me, Paula Love Clark. And tonight I have a very, very special guest on. Uh, I have an actor and producer who's doing so amazingly well at the moment that I just did not hesitate on asking him to come on board and be interviewed tonight for Integrity Magazine. So, Eric, I'm going to say it, Zazowski or Zazowski. Yeah, um, well yeah, please welcome to the Friday Vibe. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm very well. I'm very well. I'm very happy that you invited me uh, for this interview, Paula. I uh, appreciate that a lot. You're very welcome. Um, I, I just, on my Facebook stream, you just kept coming up. You've, you're winning this award and you've been put, nominated for um, Best Actor or Best Film. And it seems to be like all the short films and everything that you're involved in, all your projects at the moment, are doing so well that you're being nominated like Chinese Angel and some of the other um, short films, you know, they're winning awards and, and you're winning awards for Best Actor. So I just thought I'm going to get Eric on. Uh, I'm and so here you are. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I have to say, even at the age of five, that you showed, what can I say, you, you showed a talent in acting. But then you didn't really take it up until 2016, just four years ago. And obviously you've skyrocketed in your achievements since, but why did you wait so long? Um, well, I, I would say, you know, at age of five, yes, uh, my mom took me uh, to this play and uh, I was cast in it. And I really enjoy being in the play. But then, and I think, you know, looking back, this somehow sparked my love for acting at that point of time. But then I, I didn't recognize it. I didn't see it for so many years, you know. Uh, some people say, if you're a captain, say, on the ship, on a beautiful cruise ship, and you not necessarily know where you want to go with that ship, you might not necessarily go anywhere. You would be just drifting around, you know? Mm. Yes, you might be drifting in some beautiful places, but it yeah. still will not kind of, you know, move you into the direction because you don't know what that direction is in the first place. So what I mean by this is that, you know, for many years, I was perfectly happy uh, developing my corporate banking career in the city of London. And I absolutely love that, you know, moving from one level to another and then from one role to another. But then at a certain point of time in my life, I just start asking myself question, is this really it? You know, is this what I should be doing? Yes, I have a great stable job, but maybe there is something more. And then my friend invited me for her you know, grand, grand finale choir mm -hmm. class. And that was at uh, Bishop's Gate Institute, which is right in the city of London. Um, right. And uh, I thought to myself, and I asked her, do you guys have any acting classes, really? Because this is something I always love movies, you know? And she said, yeah, they have. So guess what? I signed up for acting class. That was something totally out of my comfort zone at that mm -hmm. point of time. And I had fantastic, really fantastic acting teacher, Valerie Dent. And I think after that first class, I just knew it, you know, I was missing so much. And that was, you know, acting, that was something that I really, really want to do to the rest of my life. It's kind of insane a little, a little bit, but I just fell in love with it. So yeah. and that is when I, in a way, recognized all the, you know, love for movies and films and everything else. So it kind of built the picture backwards. It's not that I knew at age of five, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> no, and did, would you say that um, Valerie, um, working with Valerie Dent, would you say that that was your aha moment? Because we all have them, don't we? Yeah, so um, yeah, I had few aha moments. Uh, one of them, definitely Valerie. Um, I loved classes and I still, you know, until day today, I trained with Valerie whenever I can. Uh, at the workshops, uh, but also uh, then I followed on that passion, you know. And another aha moment came in Los Angeles, California. Uh, I went to New York Film Academy for acting for film workshop. Mm -hmm. And as part of that workshop, we were filming at Universal Studios Hollywood Backlot. Uh, we were working on short films. 
And I just immediately knew, you know, this is exactly what I want to do in life. You know, I just, I, I love acting. And this is kind of how it started. Um, yeah. So these were two kind of aha moments uh, in the class. That's why acting, you know, class is so important to me. Because and how important learn. was it doing, sorry, how important was it going to Universal Studios? And, and because you're actually in the heart of Hollywood there, right? Yeah. And that's where all the, so many of the big, blockbusters are made and so many of these movies that we see on us on the screen growing up and you were actually there so how did that feel uh, it, it just felt fantastic you know being on the back lot and seeing all the cards with uh, visitors tourists were moving by uh, obviously they were not allowed to get to the filming stage where we were filming uh, but still you know and having this um, vibe of knowing that so many creative people that are around me directors producers acting teachers and brilliant actors and knowing that on that spot for instance when where we were filming uh, so many other you know films were filmed just amazing place you know i love universal studios backward hollywood it's uh, it's perfect <laughs> So, and you've traveled all around the world, right? So would you, where would you say was, um, not all around the world, I know, you, but you've traveled quite extensively um, with your acting, with the producing, with the projects you've been involved in. Where would you say was the, probably the most exciting place that you've been? Um, yeah, so I've been in so many different places, but still my heart, I would say, is, uh, if I was to say top two, say, uh, that would be Hollywood and uh, Las Vegas. Uh, maybe, yeah, definitely Hollywood, you know, I love absolutely everything about it. And uh, later this year, that was just before the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. uh, in March, uh, I uh, one of my films was um, uh, screened, you know, on Hollywood Boulevard, you have TCL Chinese Theater, which is very iconic and very, very famous, yes. right to the Dolby Theater. And there was Golden State Film Festival, which is quite prestigious as well. Um, and well established in Hollywood. And then I had Call Me, uh, my film Call Me screened on that big screen, uh, which was great. And we actually won an award best romantic, international romantic comedy short. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely Hollywood. This is one of the places that uh, that is one of the most exciting to me personally. Uh, out of all your acting experiences, um, what would you say was the one that said, right, I'm on the path? this is it, I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing all my life. Because, you know, you had a, mm -hmm. a prestigious, as you know, as you said, you had a prestigious banking career and we know that bankers earn quite a lot of money, right? And and all the lifestyle that comes with it and the accolades that you you gain along the way. But, you know, to, to leave, or I don't know if you've left it in, entirely behind, but to leave that behind and think, I want to be an actor. Yes, I'm yeah. on the right path. When was it? When was that realization for you? I think that was, you know, uh, it wasn't just one particular moment. It was a series of moments. It was like, you know, you're building puzzles and then you build this puzzle and then you add additional couple of puzzles and suddenly this big picture is coming to, to realization. So it was for me like this, you know, I just went to acting classes and then I discovered I love it. And then I knew I always, you know, was going to see movies in movie theater. And that was one of passions of mine well before I discovered I want to act. And then I went to New York Film Academy, started working on my films. Uh, and I think all of it cumulated in a way. So, it became, yes. you know, that um, one big aha moment, if you like. I love that. And um, so talk us through some of the awards that you you know, you've been very su successful to have accumulated um, from the independent film festivals, for example. Yeah, so um, there were quite a few. Uh, what I would say, you know, um, I, I suppose too many to, uh, to say right now, uh, but uh, one uh, that I really like and is a very, very recent one is uh, at Los Angeles Motion Picture Festival where I got um, Best Actor Silver Award, well done. Um, uh, which is for the film I played leading role in a Chinese angel film, which was directed and written by Sha Peng. I was involved in the production side of it, um, which was filmed on the island of Cyprus and in Canada, uh, on, uh, in Victoria, and also um, in London. 
And um, that was, you know, quite, uh, quite great award because A, it was for acting. And this is the site I would like to develop. Uh, it is a silver, it's not gold. So it tells me, yeah, some people liked it, but I have yeah. to grow, you know, so yeah. Excellent. You well, it's only been four years. It's been, you know, <laughs> yeah. literally four years of a career. I mean, some people have been acting since they were teenagers and, you know, they, they get to your age and, and they still wouldn't maybe not have achieved what you've achieved. So, you know, don't be hard on yourself. Silver's great, you know, and, and like you said, it's room for improvement. We all need to recognize our room for improvement. Um, so how important would you say that, I mean, I've seen Chinese Angel, by the way, I thought you were brilliant. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, it was brilliant, really good. Um, because when I got to start getting to know you on Facebook, uh -huh. I do this, I, I follow everyone's work and then I, where I can, I click onto their work and I'll have a look and I believe in encouraging other creatives. So yeah. I'm, I'm very keen on, you know, if people read my work and, and appreciate my work, I'll return that back and I'll, I'll watch their film. So I watched your film. It was very, very good. I really liked it. It was a very touching film um, about uh, a suicide and suicidal thoughts and mental health. It was such a beautifully constructed film. It well deserved to have won all those awards. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. So the independent film industry, obviously, it's a bit all a bit tricky at the moment, right? But how important are they to um, filmmakers, producers, um, and actors? How important is the independent film festival? Um, if I would say from my own perspective, personal perspective, you know, uh, film festivals are very, very important. Let me give you an example. If say you are an accountant or you're a banker, you would probably, or you're ACCA qualified, you would go to one of the conferences and you know other gatherings where you can learn from other people and then meet like-minded people in the yes. industry to continue on with your professional development. And the same with you know film industry. Uh, if you take this example and then convert it to film, to me, Having film festival that is being, sh that is showing, you know, your work and especially as a starting artist or independent filmmaker or an actor, you would like to gain audience. You would like to show um, to as many people as possible your work yes. because you put your heart into this, you know, and That's making right. a film, even a short film, it's not easy and it's not fast, and not fast you know, mm -hmm. thing. So. A uh, film festival is basically providing you this platform so you can connect to show your work to audience and then you can see how audience is reacting and then you can learn from it and find out what is working, what isn't maybe working. If you get a word, great, then that means that you're on the right track, for instance. And then yes. you can meet so many creative people, learn from each other, you know, build connections, networking, you know, networking in this business. Seriously, it's very, very, very important okay. because, yeah, it's even not who you know, it's who knows you. This is the most important part. And then you can start working with each other, you know, on some interesting projects uh, and then learn and then enjoy the whole atmosphere. It's just I think film festivals are, are really important, uh, play very important role to me personally. So if we take now um, the COVID situation, okay, we, we know and everyone in the film industry um, and the entertainment industry knows that it's actually crippled us. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's crippled it. But you take something like the Independent Film Festival, you, you, you know, you, you take because it, it is film festival season and, and I know it's year round, but it, you mentioned the networking, you mentioned the meeting creatives, you mentioned getting your name out there and people um, and I'm meeting people. It's so difficult to do right right now. I mean, the amount of um, people who had to have their trip, you know, Cannes Film Festival, it's it's massive. Venice, you know, um, these are big film festivals that were cancelled. So how how do you think the industry is responding and getting around it because it's all online now? So how you know how? Yeah. It's early days, but how do you feel as an actor and producer um, that the film industry is responding to that? Um, so just let me give you an example. Maybe this will be the best, you know, description. A couple of months ago, um, we, uh, well, I wrote and produced short comedy, which is called Alone Apart. And it was during the lockdown period where we couldn't go anywhere. 
And then I submitted that film to film festivals. And one of the film festivals that accepted the film and uh, named us as semi-finalist is the Burbank International Film Festival, which is right in, in LA, mm -hmm. a very, very famous and prestigious film festival. Normally it would be in person, you know, you would go to Warner Brothers backlot and then you would see the film. But because of COVID situation, what they did, they moved the festival online purely so then you can still watch all the films. I think they uh, are screening 250 films that yeah. you have to uh, buy. Well, you don't have to buy, but it's good that you have all, you know, all films pass, which will allow you to see all the films. And basically uh, you can even watch the films after the film festival ends and then be participated on in all the gala but it's all virtually so yes in a way you're missing on this mm -hmm. personal touch but you might even get even wider audience in a way because uh, there is nothing stopping people from say australia or new zealand without traveling to Burbank, you know to buy a ticket and then go online and then watch all the films it's open to the whole world if people want to see it, to see all the films, for instance, or some of the films. Yeah. So I don't know. I have mixed feelings. You know, I love the vibe, but I think maybe online this is a great idea because it will give you the audience that you probably wouldn't even dreamed of before. Obviously, you don't know how many people will, you know, physically go to see uh, films because we are in kind of uncharted territory in a way. That's right. Uh, and we are all learning, but I think that's a brilliant idea. And uh, I really hope it will go well. And also that Alone Apart will be recognized as well, uh, which is a great film festival, by the way. <laughs> I have <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> so that's a brilliant perspective because, you know, it's very difficult for people to keep a healthy perspective and a positive um, mindset right now um, across the board in all different industries. It's, it's very difficult, it's affecting a lot of people in lots of different ways. So for you to have that very positive perspective and look at it from, well, you know, it's a wider audience. It, it, there's, there's more people seeing your film that possibly wouldn't have seen it before. And you're right, if there was, I'm sure they'll develop a way of networking, more better networking online as well within that um within the industry because who knows what 2020 is going to bring because <laughs> you know 20 uh 2021 because 2020 has been yeah it's been interesting every single day is different is all i can say i totally agree yeah we don't we just don't know what's going to happen you know every single day uh, a lot of changes <laughs> A lot of changes. So going back to the positive, let's stick on the positive, right? Yeah. So what has been your greatest achievement within that short four years space of time, which is incredible? What has been your greatest achievement so far? Um, if we are thinking about awards, I would say definitely there would be, you know, like three or maybe four specific events. One is definitely Golden State Film Festival in LA and Chinese theater and screening of call me because that was right on hollywood boulevard you know you cannot be closer to hollywood than in tcl yeah. and in such a beautiful theater then we had also screened uh, and we also won another an award uh, oh by the way talking about call me this is a certificate from golden state film festival oh congratulations oh, brilliant so, <laughs> it's fantastic is, so this is one um the second one would be um silver state festival in uh, las vegas so that was last year fantastic event phenomenal and i had you know my film screen which was let go the prelude my initial very very first film screen there uh, phenomenal vibe great people and great networking and uh, i had fantastic feedback from the audience uh, which inspired me to write a second part which is uh, right now going through film festivals it hasn't been released online so you probably haven't seen it but uh, it will be eventually on some point once we go through the film festivals you know it's let go letting go which is great uh, film as well but also you know having alone apart the film that i said was accepted at Burbank for the International Film yes. Festival is yeah. a great achievement because it is really, really great event, you know, uh, in, uh, in Los Angeles. So I'm very happy. And obviously having Silver Award for Best Actor uh, with Chinese Angel, 
uh, it's it's just great, you know. It's being recognised, isn't it? It's being yeah. seen for your art. It's being um, like, for example, when I when I um, just two months after I'd published my first ever book, it got to Amazon number one bestseller. And okay, it was only for a few days, but it didn't matter. Right? It was the fact that actually I'd never written a book before, and then suddenly my first book gets gets there it's just something you that is never going to be taken away from you it's an achievement and it encourages you to go forward so going forward yes. where are your next steps would you would you direct for example um you know what <laughs> i uh, to be honest directing has never been uh, my aspiration or a, a goal or a vision i somehow grew to directing myself organically i would say you know i was uh, at uh, that this is an interesting story. I'll try to keep it quick because I'm conscious of time. <laughs> uh, uh, I was at New York Film Academy and we had Q and A session with one of the very, very, very famous Canadian actor, comedian, Seth Rogen. I'm sure you know Seth. Yes, of course. And um, this is part of what New York Film Academy do. They basically, you know, invite stars and then you get to ask them questions and you can, you know, with the audience and then learn from them. And what he said was what inspired me and these words, you know, resonated. Um, don't wait for anything to happen to you, really. Uh, you can, you know, do your own work and create as an actor. You don't need to wait for someone to cast you, you know, you don't have to sit. You just go ahead, mix up with other creative people, have a camera, even sometimes on the phone camera. Nowadays, it's good, you know, and you can create a story uh, yeah. and be proactive with your career. So that's kind of, you know, what inspired me. And then after coming back from Hollywood, from hearing, listening to um, Seth Rogen, I decided, you know, I'll create my own films. And somehow it worked out. <laughs> I mean, there was an audience for my films, which was- Exactly. And I discovered I love directing, by the way, uh, but I would ideally focus on acting and then let other people to direct. But yes. in the time, if I have spare time, you know, I don't mind directing, but it's not my aspiration. I would love to to progress acting career as a career rather than directing. So talking of aspiration then, we're 10 years ahead, right? It's gonna be brilliant. 2030 is gonna be nothing like 2020, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's, we're looking back, it's 2030, and you're looking back your the last 10 years, what would you hope to have achieved in that time? Well, when looking back, you know, you're having a nice glass of, red sitting in your lounge chair and some hot sunny beach and you're just reflecting on the last 10 years what would be the greatest achievement that you could have achieved okay let, let me quote one of my um <laughs> one of my uh people that i really adore you know arnold schwarzenegger who is one me of too. the best yeah. actors i absolutely love you know and he said I didn't want just to be an actor. I want to be the best paid performer, entertainer, movie star. You know? And this is the direction I would like to follow, to be honest. And do obviously, I wouldn't be able to be Conan the Barbarian or Terminator and do it as <laughs> great as Arnold Schwarzenegger did. But I'm sure there will be other, uh, you know, other um, uh, roles coming my way. But to answer your question more specifically, next 10 years, 10 years plan, Let's say every three years win an Oscar. I know it's challenging. We'll see. It might happen. <laughs> Who knows? And also, you know, join other um, stars uh, and have uh, my star, Alex Zasowski, on a Hollywood Walk of Fame. I would love to see one day star. If it happens within next year, 10 years, fabulous. If it takes, you know, 20 or 30 years, so be it. <laughs> but I'm yeah. hoping it will happen, you know, eventually. And also be a member of Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. I would love to inspire, you know, other people in future and then uh, pass on the experience and knowledge that I will gather, you know, over the next 10, 15, 20 years and then pass on to the new generation, which would be great. So be a member of that prestigious group of artists would be fantastic. So I say this would be the top three. Love it. Uh, yeah. It's like a vision board. It's like a... Yeah. Um, a film industry vision board because I'm, yeah. I'm a great believer in creating vision boards and visualization and and manifesting and you know seeing right you know telling yourself every single day what you're going to achieve what you're going to achieve and, and having goal cards and putting on the wall I'm a great believer and in fact I wrote it on this book I've got on this I've always got this side that in that book yeah. I don't know if you can see it yeah. Yeah. it's all about the steps to um, becoming a highly successful person 
Mm. Um, and it's all about all these different steps and, you know, and having a vision board is really key. Uh, so on my vision board was that Amazon number one bestseller. Uh -huh. I've got loads of other ones, but you know, yeah. if you've got huge goals like you have, you know, win an Oscar every three years, you know, they're not impossible goals because someone wins them, right? It's been it's, done before. It's been done before, so it's not impossible. It's been done before. It's just po possibly something that hasn't been, you know, is something that hasn't been done by you yet. And if somebody else has done it, I bet they were looking back and thinking, I can't believe I did that. But you I know? Think, you know, when you have goals that challenge you, that scare you, this is a good indicator of good goal and good vision. Yeah. Because if you don't have, you know, that goals that would challenge you going forward, then you in a way uh, will not achieve that much as much as you want but this is kind of you know even comes organically i would say you know you think about this is what i want you know and i'll do all my best to, to get it <laughs> yeah stuff. absolutely so in terms of acting do you have a particular genre you prefer working in um like i love watching rom-coms so i'm writing a rom-com <laughs> at the moment i'm just starting to write a rom-com so um do you have a particular genre that you like yeah so um Acting, I would love to be, you know, in movies that I enjoy watching. So I can forget that was me. This might be a guy who is resembling me. Maybe he looks like me, but it's not really me. Mm -hmm. But it's in a film that I would like to watch in the movie theater. So yeah, number one, romantic comedies. I love romantic comedies and comedies actually, but overall, you know, the whole genre. But also if I think about, um, say, Indiana Jones and adventure movies, I love adventure movies. Mm -hmm. Would you and, be the hero? Would you yeah. be the hero or the buddy? Uh, the hero, yeah, definitely. I don't want to play any villains. I hope I won't cast <laughs> <laughs> cast back one. And also, uh, unless it's a Terminator, and in a way, you know, in the sequel, they will turn Terminator from bad to be good. So that would be the exemption. <laughs> 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 and also the whole Marvel universe. I love Marvel and uh, yeah. create and also Star Wars, Lucas films and uh, sci-fi genre as such. So. Yeah, if it happens, you know, that my career would progress that direction, I would be extremely happy. Not horror then? You wouldn't go horror? No, no, no. It's not one of the films. You're not going to have anything bad. dripping off your face, uh, yeah. or a zombie, or you're not going to be eating anyone's neck anytime yeah. soon, right? No, no. That's <laughs> <what>. <laughs> um, so what advice would you give? Because it's obviously tough out there right now, and there are lots of challenges facing the film industry and actors and, and so on. What advice would you give to anyone set now um, in any type, any any part of the entertainment or film industry? So if you're starting and you probably don't know, or maybe you don't know that you want to start, but if there is something, you know, that you think about every single day that you would like to do, maybe this is a good sign that this is something that you should be doing and take risks. You know, it's worth it. And it's worth to try and do not try do rather than because time is passing anyways whether you do mm -hmm. it or you don't do it or wait 20 years and then look back and then ask yourself question with regret what if what if i have done it you know yeah I, you, what um, i really like when i was watching one steven spielberg was saying in one of his interviews you can google it you can see it online it's um yeah you'll find it so he said that sometimes dreams are not you know screaming at you this is what you should be doing this is what you sh who you should become but they somehow sometimes you know whisper into your ear and you don't really know you need to learn to listen to your instincts basically. so if that there is something that you would love to do just go ahead and do it basically and as Seth Rogen said uh, don't wait for anything you know you have a lot of creative people around you if yes. acting, directing, filmmaking just team up with other people they would love to help you know and then be part of the same project and then you can all of you can put heart into the project and then be successful send it to film festivals and this is the beginning of going gaining the audience I'd say so. Yeah, just go ahead. There are risks. Success is not, uh, you know, certain. No one can guarantee the success. But no. if you follow the steps, if you put heart into it, there is no reason why you wouldn't be successful. That's great yeah. advice. It's really good. And also, to uh, I like the instincts. You know, follow your instincts. You know, if you now is the time, isn't it? Now, when when everything is up in the air and and there there is very little certainty. 
well, nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow, yeah. right? Now is the time if you've got a dream or a passion or a vision or a goal, and you may have had it since childhood, like I did to write a book. You know, I wanted to write a book since I was a child, and I, I did it this year, right? Yeah. So you just go for it, right? Just try it. And yeah. it doesn't matter if there are 100 million other people doing it at the same time and, you, and you're all trying to buy in for that spot. Isn't it better as um, Les Brown, who's my favorite, one of my favorite um, uh -huh. uh, mentors? He yeah. doesn't know me. He doesn't know me. He hasn't met me yet. Um, <laughs> he always um, says, "Don't let the ghosts of your talents die yeah. with you." And I live on that, which is why I do so many things personally because I want to pursue every talent I've got and see where it will lead. And now is the time to do it, right? Now is the time to go for everything. Yeah, and then you have technology in filmmaking. You know, you can make a film on your iPhone, really, or on any phone you have. You have camera. As long as you have story to tell, and then you have a couple of friends you can shoot it with, you don't need much, you know, some basic yeah. editing software. We are not talking about Oscars immediately, but, you know, this is the way to start. And then you will build on your knowledge, get better gear, and move on. Like in any profession, basically, and keep learning. This is most important. It's like you want to be a doctor. You go to you know the school first, university, and then you study for how many years? Ten years, and you become GP. And then by the time you get to operate on people, it takes maybe twenty years. But so be it. You do what you love to do, and it takes time. You just it does. enjoy every single day. Lovely. And, and the last question before we close the interview, as you know, we're Integrity Magazine. Eric, what does integrity? The word integrity. What does it mean to you? Um, uh, I think, you know, on the, my, well, from my personal perspective is to be true to your values and try to make a world a little bit better than it was through, say, film. So you can create stories that would inspire people, that will move people, that will help them to feel something they haven't, you know, because if if not you, if you haven't made this story, uh, it would not probably happen. And also in acting, what integrity means uh, to me, again, be reliable, you know, be on time and be professional and give 120%, be not just good, but excellent in what you do, you know, and do your work. I mean, not just between uh, cut and action and cut, but well before you get to the set, you know, mm. uh, when you do the character background, you do the script analysis, you understand what's happening in that film. And you do a lot of research if you don't know something, if it's a film about aliens, you know, you might not know anything about space, but then you do research, for instance. Of course. And um, yeah, so th this is important. And also before even you get to cast, you, you get casted in that role, you know, you become integral to your own personal vision and goals. You just work out, say, in the gym. If your goal is to look like a bodybuilder, you just hit that gym every single day, you know, for an hour, five hours, how many hours you want, you know, you can. Uh, you learn, you improve your craft. You do every single day something that will bring you forward towards your vision, you know. Um, do the acting classes, do accent classes, whatever classes that you feel that are necessary to help you. To be integral with your vision, basically, with your goals, that will help you. That's brilliant. That's such a an, um, helpful answer as well for other people. Thank you so much. <laughs> Arik Sazowski, you have been um, a beautiful guest to have on this evening. You've been very informative. Um, it's been absolutely a pleasure to um, listen to your stories, listen to your journey, and seriously wish you all the very very best for um the coming few years and especially the coming few months with um all your projects thank you very much uh, paul i really uh, appreciate and thank you integrity magazine as well for letting this happen <laughs> i appreciate uh, oh, pleasure. it's been a pleasure talking to you and learning about your amazon you know and achieving goals and it's all very motivational to me as well which is great because we can help each other, you know, motivate. Always. For instance, always. Motivation every single day is like <laughs> our shower, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unless you're a boy, nine year old boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take care and have enjoy the rest of the evening and the weekend. And thank you so much for joining us on the My Friday. Pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. bye.